What actually happens when you do deep breathing exercises in this video? You're gonna know more details than you ever thought possible. My name is Dr. Story. I've been a chiropractor for over 24 years. I'm gonna give you realistic advice based on my experience. Deep breathing exercises have many benefits and those benefits can include helping you with anxiety, helping you with depression, hyper oxygenating your body, resolving uh, stress is a huge one as well as normalizing your blood pressure and oxygen levels is and lastly, changing your pH. So in this video, I'm gonna give you so many details, you're gonna become an expert in breathing. Now the first thing to understand is when we're breathing here, and I'm pretty much at sea level, uh, the oxygen in the air, you're not actually breathing pure oxygen. Here, right now, we are breathing approximately 20% to 21% oxygen. The rest of it the majority of it is nitrogen, and then there's some other things that we won't worry about. But keep in mind that when you, when someone says you're breathing in oxygen, the actual atmospheric air is really only 20-21% oxygen. Fascinating. Now the highest I have ever been was at about 10,000 feet in the air, and that's when I was in Colorado, and I was riding my mountain bike, and I couldn't believe how difficult it was to ride, you just felt like you were breathing through a straw. Well, actually at about 10,000 feet, you're not at 21% oxygen anymore. You're at 14% and that is why when you go up high in altitude that it's harder to breathe because you're actually breathing in less oxygen. Now, a lot of my friends who are in Colorado like to hike at 14,000 feet. Wow. That's only 12% oxygen. So in other words, when you're breathing in, it's not that you can breathe faster and get more oxygen in your body. Getting more oxygen is really dependent upon our own physiology as well as where we're breathing in time. So when we inhale, and I'm gonna to try to make the argument that it's slightly better, but only marginally, to breathe in through your nose rather than your mouth, but it really doesn't matter. When you breathe in, the air actually goes into the back of the throat called the pharynx, and then it goes down a tube called the trachea. The trachea will then divide into two sections called the bronchii. And then those bronchii will then further divide almost like a tree stump going into more branches, but it's upside down. The bronchii will divide into what are called the bronchioles, and then those bronchioles will divide into literally 300 million different little microscopic structures called the alveoli. And the alveoli is exactly where carbon dioxide, which is the waste product of breathing, and oxygen are exchanged because there are capillaries that surround each alveoli, and that is where the blood comes from, from the heart. Now the surface area of the alveoli is so huge that they've calculated that the average person with both lungs actually has the surface area of the alveoli of about the size of a half of a tennis court all filled within just this area right here. Amazing! Now from the trachea all the way down to the alveoli, it's lined on the inside with smooth muscle and cilia, which are like little hairs, and they kind of vibrate like this. And what they do is they vibrate, the, the structure actually secretes mucus so that it can clean and catch junk that we breathe, and the cilia actually transmit the gunk and the mucus up back upwards to our throat and we swallow that. That's pretty disgusting. But it's a way that our body protects us from breathing in bad objects. Down at the microscopic level where the alveoli live, also another structure called macrophages actually will kind of, they're kind of like Pac-Man and they eat up any type of dust particles or bad stuff that the body does not want in the bloodstream. So now there's some fascinating things about breathing and the first thing that's interesting is there is some research to support that when you breathe in through your nose rather than your mouth that our body, our nasal cavities, will actually help create 
nitric oxide which helps dilate the blood vessels. So you'll find that many people that promote breathing exercises want to emphasize that you either breathe in through the nose and out through the nose or you breathe in through the nose and out through the mouth. Either way, if you can, breathing in through the nose actually might be beneficial in helping with our blood pressure as well as creating a dilation of the blood vessels to get more oxygen to different tissues. So there are two super duper interesting things about breathing and here's number one. Did you know that the blood pressure in the pulmonary artery that comes from the right side of our heart on average is about only 15 millimeters of mercury? Wow. The purpose of this is so that it does not overwork the right side of the heart. You see, the reason why this occurs is you don't want a high pressure going into the lungs because you need to have carbon dioxide excreted from the blood into the alveoli to go out our mouth when we breathe and oxygen to come in. So the pressure needs to be lower. I mean, heck, if there was too much pressure, then it would push fluids into the alveoli and that would suck because we wouldn't be able to breathe. We'd have fluid in our lungs. That's a bad thing. Now with that lower pressure, there needs to be exchange of carbon dioxide and oxygen, but also we need to prevent fluids from going from the blood vessel into the alveolar space. And how that works is through a process called oncotic pressure. Now this is a special type of osmotic pressure that we all learned in junior high and high school, but it's different because how it works is it's not based upon pressure or salts. What happens is when our blood vessels go through and become the arterioles surrounding the alveoli, what ends up happening is you need the pressure to go from the alveoli into the blood vessels to prevent water and fluids from going in. And how it does that is through the protein called albumin. If there's more albumin in the blood vessel, then it prevents fluids from accumulating in the alveolar space. So the second most interesting thing about the lungs is how the arterioles react to oxygen levels. So normally, if there's a muscle that has not enough oxygen, the arterioles around that area are going to dilate, which means they're going to open up so that more oxygen could get to that structure. But in the lungs, that's totally different. What happens is, if you have to imagine an entire lung, and if there's a part of the lung, let's say the bottom part of your lung, and it is not getting enough oxygen because you're not taking deep breaths, then what happens is this. The arterioles are not gonna dilate in the area where there's low oxygen because they want to dilate and be able to exchange oxygen and carbon dioxide in places where you're breathing. Why do the arterioles do this? Because they're trying to shunt blood to the areas where there's the most air and thus the most oxygen. So what this means in real life is if you take shallow breaths, for example, like this, you're not getting a whole lot of air into your lungs. So there's only so many alveoli that are getting air and thus oxygen. So your body in its infinite wisdom is going to shunt blood away from the parts of the lungs that are not receiving any air. It's going to dilate the blood vessels in the area where there's the most amount of oxygen. If your body did that to the peripheral arterioles, you'd be in deep trouble. Think about it. If you were exercising a muscle, let's say your quadricep, and it was losing oxygen, and then your body suddenly tried to constrict blood vessels to that, it would have less oxygen. Fascinating, I find. And this, my friends, is why when we do breathing exercises, it's important to do super deep breathing. It's not enough to just breathe shallowly or breathe quickly. Sometimes you'll hear about people talking about alveolar breathing, and that's a little bit of a misnomer because what they're trying to communicate is that you should breathe deeply. But you have to breathe through with your alveoli. If you don't, uh, you're not getting oxygen in your body. 
So I hope you found that fascinating because to me it is extremely fascinating how we take for granted when we breathe in, we're actually breathing in about 21% oxygen and how that gets exchanged in our lungs is extremely beneficial. I have a number of videos on how to properly do diaphragmatic breathing, chest breathing, the combination, should you breathe through the nose, all these questions are answered. But in summary, just to let you know, and I'll put the links down below, is breathe through your nose, breathe as deeply as you can, do it every day. The everyday thing is, you know, kind of important.